so uh, hopefully everybody had a coffee, because it is late. Um, but yeah, I'm Mark Holverhouse, so I've been lucky enough to be involved in probably four or five crosswork network controller projects already. So even though it's a relatively new product, um, I think we've already established some best practices and some learnings from our early adopters. So we've compiled some of those learnings into, into best practices, and that's what I'm going to go through today. I've not seen anyone else with an agenda slide, so here's one, um, just so that we, we know what we're going to talk about. So a quick recap on what CNC is. So we've, we've had two presentations this afternoon on crosswork, but I just want to touch through the moving pieces because it, there's a lot to understand, and uh, I want everybody to be on the same baseline. The bulk of the presentation will be on planning a CNC deployment. So I've, I've got a philosophy with, with my customers that the solution shouldn't be more complicated than the problem. And planning a CNC deployment is, is the first step to success. Without that planning, it's not going to work. A few best practices. You know, we add to this list every day. Um, I've got a lot of colleagues sat over there who, who you know, need to be called out because it's, it's their feedback and their their evaluation of, of how things are going, which inform these best practices. I know this is developer days, and one of the key topics that we wanted to touch on was what's the role of a developer when we're deploying Crosswork Network Controller? So it delivers certain capabilities out of the box, and there are certain areas which require customization or development. So I wanted to shed some light on that to provide some clarity. And then some conclusions. So let's see where we can get to. OK, so the architecture. So uh, as uh, we've already heard this afternoon, so Crosswork Network Controller is built around a common infrastructure. So this light blue box at the top is what we call the Crosswork Cluster. So this is going to be comprised of a number of VMs which run a Kubernetes uh, cluster. Within that. Uh, common infrastructure, we then run crosswork applications on top. So we've heard about two of the applications this afternoon, change automation and health insights, but we also have a few more. So we have optimization engine, and anybody familiar with Cisco Way and XTC from previous projects, um, optimization engine is like an evolution of some of the Way automation use cases. Active Topology and Inventory handles a live, real-time discovery of the network and the network services managed by NSO and visualizes them on a common fabric. We've got Service Health, which is coming in the next version of, of CNC, which then looks at tracking the, the intent that's been deployed by NSO and uh, via the creation of heuristic packages, we can then look at the health as a, of a service as well as the component parts which contribute towards that service. And then we have a zero-touch provisioning app as well. So you can see that on top of a common infrastructure, we can then incrementally add capabilities um, fr from the different, different solutions. All of this sits behind a common web UI and API. So if you imagine where we were three years ago with uh, the service provider automation portfolio, we had a lot of individual pieces. But the feedback from the field was, I can pick and choose what I want, but then the integration of those pieces and the presentation of those pieces to northbound systems is somewhat like a snowflake. It will always be unique to me. But what we want is more generalization. So all of those apps that run within the crosswork infrastructure as well as services managed by NSO, as well as data, uh, data gateway collection jobs. Um, they're all accessible through a common API. So Crosswork looks to uh, standardize that interaction so there's just one API to all of those functionalities. And then the key thing to call out is all of these capabilities, just like NSO is multi-vendor, the, the focus of CNC is that it's multi-vendor. So it's multi-vendor transport network automation. So a couple of my customers that I'm working with at the moment, they've got significant non-Cisco infrastructure. So the capabilities that we're deploying for them aren't specific to Cisco devices. It's also not just Cisco's view of how stuff works, right? This architecture is aligned with the Telecom Infra project. So if anybody's familiar with that um, open standards framework for SDN controllers, CNC fits into what they define as an SDN domain controller. 
So we would have an IP transport domain controller, we would have an optical domain controller, and then a hierarchical controller sat on top. So CNC would be one of those SDN domain controllers. We would then have Cisco optical network controller as an optical controller, and then uh, the hierarchical controller from our Sedona NetFusion acquisition would be the hierarchical function. So this aligns nicely to the TIP project, and um, that's the direction that we see some of our customers going in. In the reality, this is what it looks like, so not quite as pretty. But it is a couple of VMs. So we've got a number of VMs for the Crosswork Infra. We've got the usual NSO VMs, a number of Data Gateway VMs, and SRPCE, either VMs or physical routers. And this provides the ability to scale out certain functions as, as and when we need them. So if we need LSA from NSO, for example, or if we increase the number of KPI collections, we can horizontally scale components like CDG, or if we increase the number of uh, network elements to uh, transport optimization via PSEP, we can increase the number of PCEs horizontally. In terms of the protocols, I'm not going to deep dive into that, but the key takeaway from this slide is we're also standardizing and minimizing the touch points into the network. So everybody in the room is probably familiar with NSO being a, a standardized write function to the network. So all config changes should go via NSO. Um, but what we've also standardized is that all read functions should now go via data gateway, whether they're going towards crosswork apps within the cluster, or as we've just heard, whether they're going off towards an external Kafka destination or an external data consumer. So we can standardize the touch points in and out of the network. And the same with SLPCE from an optimization perspective. Uh, we'll have a PSEP session, a BGP LS session down to the network devices, simplifying those integrations southbound from the controller. Northbound, uh, so the majority of the integrations will go for, via the Crosswork Infra API, and then Crosswork Infra will perform a proxy function to some of the other components. In terms of the functionality, and honestly fitting this content into 35 minutes was a challenge, these are some of the call-out capabilities of, of Crosswork Network Controller, and, and really the motivator for this particular session was there's like 200 features coming out of the box. So how do you plan that? How do you deploy this controller and make that deployment successful? Because we've got topology discovery visualization. We've got things like flex algo visualization, service provisioning and visualization uh, via NSO. We've got transport policy provisioning. So things like SRTE or RSVPTE or SRV6TE. You know, the, the list goes on. And understanding which capabilities are important to your organization and planning that deployment will ensure success because it's easy to get distracted by some of the sexier, more complicated use cases, but they have to be built on a foundation. So you know, planning really is, is the key in, in terms of adopting this in a programmatic way. So how do we achieve success? So somewhere between boiling the ocean and useless is a sweet spot. Um, let me know if you find it, but there, there apparently is. So these are just a few of the words which come to mind when we kick off one of these SDM projects with our customers. If I've missed anything, let me know. Um, but I think it, it's fair to say that these are the topics which will always come up when we talk about transport SDN, when we talk about programmability, when we talk about telemetry, this is where the mind goes. And it's easy for an organization to get distracted or to get pulled into a rat hole of complexity. The biggest word in the center of the screen is prioritization, because if we don't prioritize, if we don't stay true to what's important to the business and solve the immediate problem, then we will struggle to get to production, we may lose um, relevance in terms of a measure of success, and we, you know, we may forget why we even started this project. But there's also avenues like CICD or 
establishing a net DevOps organization. We heard from Martin this morning about how Swisscom are, are embracing building different teams, but also recognizing different personas, perspectives, and opinions on this journey. It's not easy, and we have to accept that we'll probably make mistakes along the way. But I think recognizing the complexity and knowing what to park, what's your immediate to be executed to-do list versus a strategic direction is fundamental to success. So first piece of advice, define an MVP. It's easy to say, it's hard to achieve. Spoiler alert, for CNC, your MVP is going to be the platform design, test, and deploy. So you can't have any of the nice use cases unless you have deployed the platform. And as we saw a few slides ago, it's, it's not the simplest platform. There's a few VMs, there's a few touch points in and out of the network. So when we think about what that platform is going to deliver, we need to simplify and minimize those integrations to the network. We want to say, what do we need in order to deploy the platform and get it through things like penetration testing or establishing the firewall ruling in our data center down to the network? Those internal hurdles are common to most projects, and they're the ones which will consume time. We also know that every cloud is made of tin if you look hard enough. So even if it's running on an internal IT cloud, the lead time for that cloud deployment might be weeks, it might be months. So that, you know, we can focus on the agility of developing a software solution, but if the lead time to deploy the controller is going to be weeks or months, then we need to build that into the project plan to avoid disappointment. The use case that you're likely to start with is topology auto-discovery. So if we want to visualize the topology and then visualize the network services and then visualize the segment routing TE set on top of those services, you need to start with consuming the topology. And in its simplest form, that means we need to connect SRPCE to the network using BGPLS. And that in itself can be a project on its own, right? BGPLS, unless you've had a PCE in your network, you're unlikely to be having BGPLS configured. So does BGPLS already exist on your network element test plan? If not, or if you know you're going to be deploying a solution like this, start to get those features on your network device test plans today so that it doesn't become a blocker for an SDM project in six or 12 months. The same for things like NetConf. Don't allow the choice of NED to be a showstopper for an SDM project or a controller deployment project. Start thinking ahead of time. If you're interacting with your devices via CLI SSH today and you start deploying NSO or CNC, you might be drawn towards NetConf Yang, but if that's the first time that you're touching device Yang models and establishing whether you've got full coverage of everything that you need for your services, you don't want those, those, uh, those test activities on the critical path for the controller. So really try to make sure that you know, we've got a foresight in the features that we expect on the network devices before we need them from the actual controller itself. There is a degree of chicken and egg, right? Nobody will have deployed PSEP unless they've got a PCE. But it doesn't mean that you can't start working with the network team to say, these features are going to be consumed by the uh, network controller in a few months' time. Let's get them on the test plan for the devices. Um, management, control plane, data plane testing. So typically the controller is connecting via management protocol, so SSH, SNMP, GNMI, etc. So we need to think about the firewall ruling. And that's not always a, it's easy to think about the flow matrix we can share now if you wish, but to get that deployed against a data center firewall, there's often hurdles to jump through. It, it's not so much a, a technical problem, it's often how can you get to the top of the list of a data center admin? And how can you make sure that he or she can provision the firewall quickly enough? You want to minimize or, or take a thought of where SRPCE is going to live. So SRPCE as a virtual network function could reside in the data center, running as quote unquote, just another VM next to the cluster. But if you put it in the data center, 
do you need to consider how you're going to get a control plane integration back to that VM running sat next to the controller? Or would it make more sense to run the PCE out in the network where it can just be neatly in integrated into the control plane? These are the sort of considerations that your MVP, if you can think about the start uh, very early on, the deployment of CNC will be much easier. And the objective should be CNC in production. Now, visualizing the topology, consuming the IGP topology, is going to provide great value. Nobody would want to perform traffic optimization or send a traffic um, down a low latency path without having offline thought about exactly where that traffic would go. And low latency routing is, is relatively new on most SP's agenda. So do they really understand the latency between different routers today? Moreover, you want to make sure that the latency that's being collected, measured, or reflected into the controller is what you expect it to be. You don't want there to be a, a false reading where suddenly all traffic goes down a particular path because there's an erroneous latency measurement. So read-only will provide a lot of insight that will be very valuable before we get to the more complicated use cases. Beyond that MVP, this is really where you can start expanding the horizons, right? Oh, sorry, uh, so, some best practices first. We heard earlier from Martin about different environments, and I've got a reference slide which simplifies Rene Minder's perspective on the different environments. But those environments, if we have five or six different environments for development, integration, staging, pre-integration, pre-prod, and, pro and production, you need compute for all of those. So it's not so much that we need all of them, but we have to recognize the purpose of the environments that we do have. Preparing the network, so as, as we've said, standardizing configs, uh, network device software versions, things like licensing servers, firewall rules, credentials that the controller is going to connect to the devices on, that can be planned in advance. Topological uh, collection, so thinking where your BGPLS collection points might be. We can hierarchically distribute uh, the topology through multi-IGP processes or um, different regions of the network via hierarchical BGP propagation. So, and that's something that can be done today. You don't need the controller to start configuring those features. PCE and PSEP, we can deploy PCE and consume a topology by, via BGPLS without thinking about PSEP. We only need PSEP when we start doing traffic engineering. And my recommendation for PSEP would be deploy it organically. We don't need to deploy every device in the network to have a PSEP session to the PCE on day one, not unless you're planning on having immediate PCC-driven SRTE on day one. So when you think about which devices peer to which pair of SRPCEs, just do it organically. Say, OK, now we've got a need for SRTE on these particular devices. Let's configure the PSEP sessions. Crosswork data gateway can be deployed horizontally or scaled horizontally. So the number that we need is a factor of the number of network elements, the number of KPIs that we're collecting, the cadence of those collections. And also, if we want um, a resilience objective, so we'll have a number of standby CDGs. So we should think about those factors when we're looking at the data gateway design. Validate and explore the discovered topology. So don't trust the controller verbatim. It's only going to collect what it is told by the network devices. So the first two months of, of exploring the collected data, you should be thinking, what would happen if I deployed a low latency service? What path would it take? Is that expected? What would be the capacity impact if I deployed a service on that path? And then try and remove the nice to haves, right? There's a whole bunch of things on the word cloud which probably can wait. Right? We don't necessarily need to have a fully developed software development CI CD pipeline just to deploy the controller. Okay, so be very critical and challenge what's actually being brought into the MVP. Keep on that objective of get the controller in production. And only look forward. Okay. If we can leave legacy behind, let's do so. If the more we try to bring with us, the more complicated things are going to be. 
So wherever possible, look forward. Once we've got that CNC deployment in production, then we can start looking at use cases. And use cases without a pipeline are just, you know, we're randomly selecting thoughts from our head and we're implementing them. There's no prioritization, there's no business justification. We're just doing things because we think of them. So it's absolutely critical that we formalize those use cases. And I've got a, a template that I've included for reference, which will help standardize the documentation and the, the structure of what we're implementing. And I think KPI collection is just another use case. We spoke earlier about automatically turning on KPI collection. Let's think about it as another use case. Which devices? What's the collection cadence? What's the, the telemetry path that we need? Quite often, people think about, let's collect once and then publish many. Well, we may have two applications using potentially the same KPI, but do they need it on the same cadence? Do they need aggregation of that KPI? So not everything is equal. Environments, we've already touched upon. Software development pipelines, we only need them when we're doing actual development. We don't need them to deploy the controller. So if our MVP is topology consumption, we can park this topic until we get to uh, actual software development. Release management of CNC is a, a good topic to also have in mind. Cisco is going to be releasing new CNC versions every six months, I believe. So think about which versions have got the features that are important to your business and then build a strategy for the next two years to say, we need to adopt every release or we need to adopt every other release. And think about the velocity of your organization and the test capabilities of your teams and allow that to inform your release management of CNC. Align with network evolution. So we heard Kevin this morning talk about simplifying the network. If the controller is not aligned to the simplification of the network, if we've got the controller supporting things like RSVPTE, it doesn't mean we have to use it. So if the network's evolving towards SRV6, maybe SRV6 is the point in time where we use segment routing V6TE. We don't need to use RSVPTE just because we've got it. So align with the network evolution. You can also, as, as I mentioned, inf influence the network team tell them what's coming up in the controller and say, have you tested GNMI as supported on the device? Don't allow their deficit to be the failing of your controller project. Solution evolution, so scale the diff different operator personas and integrations. For sure, things are going to get more and more you know, complicated or better at fully integrated as we go forward. It's good to have it as a as a marker on, on the roadmap, but you don't need to solve it all today. This is a reference slide. Um, I found it very useful personally to help customers structure their documentation of a use case. So let's give this to, to your teams. And if they say, we've got a use case for the controller, if they can't fill out every box of that, send them away and tell them to go and do some more homework because these are not difficult questions. And if a use case has been thought about sufficiently that you can answer all of those, those points, it will help you structure how you break that use case up into different service flavors or how we approach different network elements methodically. This is a much more simplistic version of, of the slide that Martin shared this morning from Rene, but you know, we, we need these purposes across those different labs. We may not need all of the labs. Um, and it's important when we consolidate the number of environments to make it clear to the business what functionality we may lose. So in theory, you could get away with just one environment called production. If you want to run with a pair of scissors pointing at your face, you can. But if you trip, you know, don't cry. Um, it's important that people understand the impact of removing a solution uh, of an environment we're not removing any of the purposes and we're not removing the people who interact with the different environments. So I urge you again, you know, when you're planning the deployment of a controller, document it. Because if the business is only funding two environments, production and a lab, you have to accept that the lab will have some contention and there will be things that we can't do in a particular environment. Shoulds and musts, right? It, it's very likely that network devices will have to be shared between environments. 
And then we just need to be aware of things like, okay, there will be two instances of NSO potentially managing the same device. We need to acknowledge that there'll be a constant out of sync problem. So just a, a few suggestions there. The out of the box uh, features from, from CNC, I won't go, th go through them, it's the same list that was at the start of the presentation, but the middle column, this is really where it gives a description of the development that potentially could be required for different capabilities. So it's important to realize where developers play a role in the solution and where we need network engineers or IT engineers to deploy the, the solution. You can see obviously anything that touches NSO has a natural need for development. When we get to things like service health, the development need is slightly different. It's designed to be a low code solution. So there's a need for, to understand JSON and there's a need to understand the XPath coming out of NSO services, but you don't have to be a purebred developer in order to be able to build those heuristic packages. So I'll leave that for reference. What I've not mentioned in detail because there's a related session on, on um, on Thursday is most of the functionality that the controller wants to write to the network is being handled by the core function pack. So the core function pack is divided into two, two parts. We've got the top part focusing on SRTE and these are supported service deployment instances. So in terms of deploying ODM policies or SRMPLS TE policies, SRV6 policies, these are within the core function pack. So they're tested against uh, specific XR and XE versions, and they work entirely out of the box. So you can just install it and then use either the web UI of CNC or the API in order to start provisioning those particular policies. There's also included a whole bunch of function packs. So we've got draft implementations of L2NM and L3NM. We've also got RSVPT LSP draft implementation for for a number of uh, different LSP types, as well as service assurance with 1731. The, the session on Thursday will talk about how we customize those example function packs. And that customization can also be extended towards third party. So as, as I mentioned at the start, the two projects that we're, we're working on at the moment, they've got a lot of third party. So even though this is a Cisco network controller, the core function pack and the rest of the functionality is designed to be multi-vendor. So in conclusion, there's a lot of functionality coming out of the controller. And there are both out of the box capabilities and also things which require or, or can benefit from customization. The, pla the, the key to success is planning. If you divide, iterate, you can then conquer. If you try and boil the ocean, it won't happen, right? I mean, you'll just either take forever or you'll never get to production. You need to remain focused on what's important and that should be what's funding the business case for this particular solution. Don't allow other people's objectives to, to dilute your impact. Don't overlook the importance of network engineering. I'm biased because I started as a, as a network engineer, but a lot of that functionality is network engineering based. It's not pure software development. There's a, a need to have that hybrid team where we've got people evolving the, the network to next gen technologies, as well as having software developers. Making sure you understand what each other are working on is, is absolutely the key. And then lastly, challenge the status quo. Don't be afraid to challenge your, your business. If something's going to take a long time, if there's an internal bottleneck, Make sure it's known. This is your project, and and if somebody's going to say, "Okay, this is this is what we expect," and someone else's challenge or bottleneck is going to jeopardise your success, just just be honest. So thank you very much. Those are a few related sessions. Uh, you'd need a time machine for the second bullet point because we've already seen that one. And a quick call to action. Uh, come and find me. I'm here until Thursday. So if you agree or disagree on what I've said, if there are other things that you think would make the deployment of a network controller easier, quicker or better, then let me know. We're still iterating the product. We're still uh, improving those best practices. So come and find me. Thank you.
Gut.